Hello, welcome to the And Evil podcast. This is Chris Jansen, and evil is the destruction of freedom. And Evil podcast was inspired by the book, The End of All Evil by Jeremy Locke. And that's a book that you can pick up for free. You can download the PDF. Um, it's been a while since I shared that link, but if you just type in The End of All Evil by Jeremy Locke, it'll come right up. And I'm sure my guest today, Shane Radliff from Liberty Under Attack and Vanu, the podcast will have some advice on where to find either that book or many other priceless books about freedom and liberty. And that's partly what we're going to talk about today. What's up, Shane? Thanks for joining me. Cool. There we go. Hey, uh, hey, Chris, uh, thanks for uh, you know inviting me on to chat. I'm looking forward to it. It's been, uh, what, a year and a half or some, something like that. I don't remember when we, uh, when we chatted last on your podcast, but um, you always, uh, you know, appreciate uh, reconnecting. So looking forward to it. Yeah, fantastic. We must have met like, shoot, I'm trying to remember what year. I'm thinking it was somewhere between 2006 and 2007, maybe uh, somewhere in there. Well, maybe not that far back. I wasn't even in the. I wasn't in. in uh, I guess it would. It would. It would like, maybe 16 or 17. Yeah, maybe six. Maybe. No. Yeah. No. It was 2012 or 2013 or somewhere in there. Maybe. Uh, ma no? probably. I don't, I don't think know. so. Maybe 2015 at the earliest. I would say probably. Um, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm getting so but, old. I'm like. No, I get it. No, I have no. <laughs> no, I have a hard time myself. No, uh, you're right. Keeping on track of you know calendars and clocks and such. So, um. yeah, and I always get that confused. It's because uh, I think back to the houses I lived in, and I made one move like 2007, 2008, and then another one, uh, 2011, 2012, and I sometimes I get those two time periods mixed up. Ah, okay. But yeah, like anyway, it's been five or six years at least since we met and you know we used to chat pretty regularly back in those days um working on our own products um projects towards freedom and back then you were um really pumping hard with libertyunderattack.com and i was so happy when i came back in 2012 and uh or 2020 you know and looked it up and you're still there and you're still doing your podcast and talking about the vanu and uh, we could talk a little bit about that today um you're still going strong on the vanu podcast right Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, obviously, it's whenever I, whenever I, you know, have time to release stuff, and sometimes, sometimes it might go like a month or two without a release, and then other times it'll be like five in a week. So, um, it's kind of sporadic, but uh, it's pretty much when I'm inspired to put something out. Um, and you know, whether in the form, it's not just you know regular podcasts or interviews anymore. I release a lot of, um, you know, speaking in terms of flipping tech publications. Um, I release uh, you know free audiobooks there, like second round book on strategy. That full audiobook is uh, available on the Vani podcast, uh, a podcast feed. Um, then uh, like just below the surface, a guide to security culture by Kyle Reardon. That's also out for free. It's like a three or four hour audiobook. Um, and then uh, we've got uh, other stuff too, like uh, like the Free Republic of Pasadena, another project I'm working on, building a parallel network. Uh, I'll release some. Uh, <clears throat> Some like com some comical culture jamming stuff, um, and I guess my my standards. If I don't cringe, it's not good enough. So um, it's uh, you know it's for fun. Um, I like the the culture jamming comedy angle for that. But so that that, that stuff gets released on the on the Vonnie feed too. Um, and then uh, just I guess recently um, we started we I guess started doing the passing second round assemblies again. So those are you know three hour conversations, two three hour conversations with uh, you know um, really you know talented um, committed self liberators. So. Um, yeah, um, VaniPodcast.com is pretty much like you can find any anything I do is always published there. So like if that's pretty good, a uh, pretty good, pretty good place to to start with. Yeah, and and just in case someone's listening who doesn't know the story, um, maybe you could give them a little bit of background about Vanu and Rayo mm -hmm. and how that inspired you. Yeah, yeah. So um, yep. Yeah, so you mentioned Liberty Under Attack. Uh, it's, it didn't start as a publishing outfit. It started as a podcast um, before I transitioned over to Vanu. But uh, um, but yeah, for we did something called the Direct Action Series uh, back in twenty beginning of twenty sixteen is when we started January twenty sixteen, and um, uh, my co-host not my co-host at that time, but my co-host of the Vaughn Podcast, um, the founding of the podcast, um, he he found this uh, you know this book review on a website, um, only like three lines. I think it was by Wally Conger, who um, anyone who's you know into agorism will be familiar with Wally Conger, but it might have been uh, on his blog. It was only like you know like three paragraphs or something. But uh, I found it on Amazon. There are only like two or three copies left. It's called Bonnie the Search for Personal Freedom. Um, it's just, you know, like, uh, it's, it's, it's not a flashy looking, you know, it's just an old green book is kind of what it looks like. And it costs like 30 or 35 bucks. And, you know, mind you, at that time, I was in higher level indoctrination, what I call college. And um, I, I wasn't, you know, really into studying Austrian economics at that time. You could get like three or four books for like 20 bucks. So I spent 30 bucks on this old book that I really had no idea what I was getting myself into. And, uh, you know, I got it and I, I uh, read it. 
and uh, I was I was blown away. So so basically, the, the guy who wrote it went by uh, the pseudonym of Rayo. And uh, back in the mid to late '60s, um, he got uh, you know sick of uh, he he started seeing the world a lot like we see it now. I would say um, back in the late '60s, and uh, he took dramatic you know um, you know he made dramatic lifestyle changes um, to increase his personal freedom uh, to what to to make himself invulnerable to coercion, uh, which is which is Vanu. Um, so um, he started out uh, you know as a van nomad. And uh, soon after, I guess uh, he calls them. I guess he call he calls them slave tags, like uh, you know, driver's licenses and registration. And he didn't feel free if he had to, you know, ask for permission to, you know, drive. So um, he uh, um, he started out in a, in a van, and then uh, you know took the, the I guess the radical uh, you know end um, of um, yeah, I guess uh, wilderness bond. It was uh, where, where he ended up, uh, basically living in a polyethylene a tent. Uh, in the Siskiyou, uh, Siskiyou region, uh, you know, Northern California, Southern Oregon, or Northern Oregon, Southern, or Northern California, Southern Oregon. And uh, then, uh, so he started writing for, you know, various liber libertarian zines back in the mid 60s. And then by 1974, um, he had disappeared. Um, he stopped writing um, publications and no one knows what happened to him. And uh, then I guess 11 years later, or no, I guess it was like nine years later, um, a guy named Jim Stum, who had been a, an archivist of a lot of these libertarian zines and publications from the 60s, um, released uh, um, a book called, um, he released that book as, a, as, a, as an anthology, essentially. And uh, without that, I would never found it. And then uh, just recently, I mean, it's, it's crazy to, to you know, go full, full circle on this, because I never thought I'd get, I didn't think Jim Stone was even alive back then. But he is, and we're in contact now, and he sent me his entire archive oh, wow. collection. Um, because he, he's getting old and he doesn't want it, he doesn't want it to be lost. And I've been trying to, when I have time, I digitize them and release them. So like he, he, he sent them all to me. I haven't got, I haven't been back to that archiving project in a while, but, but regardless, um, that's fantastic. And, uh, so then there's, there's him and then there's a guy named Erwin Strauss who was one of the inspirations for, you know, the free Republic of Pasnia. Um, he, he wrote a book, uh, back in 1969 called how to start your own country. And, uh, one of the, Examples he gives is a model country, and it's like a model train set. It's got all the trappings of the real thing, but um, you know, well, I do it more as like a culture jamming thing, or as like a, it's just a face for like a cooperative or a parallel network or something like that. And it's a fun way to fun way to present it too. But uh, anyway, uh, pertaining to Irwin, I actually uh, got in contact with him too. He's still doing. Um, there's a, a, a he does a, a he did a zine back in the '60s. Still again, still going. Uh, called the Connection, Libertarian Connection. And uh, I subscribed for a year or so. I didn't have time, much time to look at it. And it wasn't, you know, too, um, it was, you know, it was, it was st still interesting and cool, but not really um, conversations I was interested in at this time. But regardless, he was, I, I was in contact with Ernest Strauss too. So um, a lot of the, there's a, a few of these folks that are still around, uh, which is really, really amazing. But um, I guess to, to bring this background to Vanu, um, I, I've got uh, a lot of stuff archived on, you know, the Vanu website um, and Liberty Type Publications. A lot of that motivation to start with was, um, or a lot of the ideas I had where, you know, I could, um, you know, you know, republish these and people, if people want paperback formats of stuff and they want to support my work, um, they can get, you know, these really awesome books um, on self-liberation, libertarian philosophy, um, all of these things. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the, the long and short on, on, on Vanu, um, radical lifestyle styles and in, uh, in pursuance of, of freedom. And, uh, it's pretty much, uh, you know, there, there's some examples given in the book. I've talked about a lot of examples, but, uh, you know, the mantra of Vanu is Vanu is yours for the making. So, um, whatever, wherever you find yourself in your life, wherever you, um, whatever situation you find yourself in, um, you, if you're taking steps to make yourself more invulnerable to the coercion of the state or what I call the servile society, um, then essentially you're a Vanuan. Um, I'd say it's a little bit, Vanu is a really hardcore freedom strategy. So it's more than just like that basic, but, um, you get what I'm getting. You, I'm sure you get where I'm, I'm coming from that. So really, um, if you're taking steps to make yourself more invulnerable, um, you know, we're all building our own, you know, invulnerable lifestyles. So, uh, it's very personalizable. Yeah. And that, you know, that really attracts me to your work and I always keep coming back and that's why I love having these talks with you. And I want to actually going forward, um, encourage people to um, look more at these books that you have on your website. And in this episode, we're going to spend a little time looking at the website and actually talking about some of the books you have presented on Liberty under And, um, you know, what's striking me right now is hearing you kind of go through that synopsis a little bit of, you know, your history and discovery of Vanu is, you know, I have these conversations regularly with other folks in the natural law community, in the freedom community. Um, I guess you could call it that there is somewhat of a freedom community out there. You know, a lot of people I know that recognize that this is a serious issue in our world, that we don't really have freedom. 
and um, we need to fight for it and that we need to make space for it. And that's hard because we're living in such a backwards world. Uh, I had a conversation with another content creator, um, Leslie, where we, Leslie Powers, where we did this episode I called The Fish Tank. And we were talking about the, the movie Finding Nemo, you know, and like some of those fish, they grew up in captivity in the fish tank, you know, and so Nemo shows up in the fish tank and he's like, there's an ocean out there. And to me, that represents freedom, right? None mm -hmm. of us have actually ever been free. We've always lived in this fish tank. And so well, it's hard for people to envision it. And what you do in your work is offer people practical steps. And, and part of that is recognizing we're not just going to go from being enslaved to being an anarchist, you know, and it, it kind of struck me that you mentioned um, Rayo and his work and libertarians, where I think he went from my point of view, beyond just libertarian mm -hmm. and closer to being a true anarchist, which most of us are pretty far from. And I have to admit, even though I like the philosophy of anarchy, I'm pretty far away from it myself. I'm not there. I don't try to call myself an anarchist. I try to call myself an abolitionist. I'm trying to end slavery. I'm trying to end evil, but I'm not there in the physical world. I have a lot more to do, but I'm constantly taking steps. And thanks to you, I know what some of those next steps are and people like you that have helped pave that way. So mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious to see what you think about this. Like, I guess you could call it a juxtaposition of understanding the philosophy of the way we want things to be, but then the reality of what we're actually dealing with and what's practical in our lifetime. Yeah. So, um, does that make so good. Sense? yeah, it, it does. It does. And I, I guess um, the, the first thing, and Rayo talked about this in the sixties, again, in the sixties, um, there's a lot of people, there are a lot of new folks, um, you know, you mentioned the freedom committee. I'll use that, that terminology too. There's a lot of new folks, you know, over the past you know few years. And um, he's, he was, he, he, he viewed, or I guess the, the label that he uses like to, to put this in, in context, like um, there's, you know, the serve all society is what he calls it. So, um, and then I guess the, the other way I look at it is first and second realm, the first being, you know, the, I guess the, the realm of slavery and the second realm being um, the realm of freedom. So I think the first off is just a, a, acknowledging that and recognizing it. Um, and it's not easy. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, to, to come to a lot of these conclusions is not easy. Um, I don't enjoy, enjoy, I don't enjoy a lot of it. I enjoy the pursuit of truth, but you know, it's not always easy to come across some of the things I come across um, and can verify. Right. So um, yeah, I guess that, that'd be the, the, the first thing. And um yeah, back when I start when I, I guess started down this path, like I was, I was still, you know, very much ingrained in the system. But thankfully, I didn't have a whole lot of ties. But I really didn't have any alternatives out of it at that point. Um, just a broke college student essentially, and then uh, you know, putting out podcasts and radio shows and, and, and things like that. But uh, um, so you, you could still kind of partially um, exist in you know the sort of all society in that system. Um, and you know you, you'd still you still were not free by any standards, but you were you were. Um, it was a lot less overt um, than what it was, you know, come, come 2020, um, where I don't think it's really, it really, it's really much of a choice anymore. It's like if you have these ideas and you can't put up with that society, then you have to, you have to like take steps to, you know, divest from it. Um, and, you know, um, in some sense, at least, um, or at least in a lot of senses, I would say. Um, and the first one of those being, you know, financial independence. Um, that's really the, um, that's really the, one of the major controllers of the first realm at this point um, of the servile society is because is, is, that's I mean, a lot of people got put in really bad situations, um, you know, a few years ago because they had a reliance upon that single source of income. And um, if you did, and, and so, yeah, pe if people didn't want that option, um, you know, I've, I've heard of some legal, some legal, legal avenues to go about that. But um, then again, the people who pursued those legal avenues trying to keep their jobs, they had to quit because the environment, you know, the health industry was so bad. Um, that they didn't, they couldn't work there anymore. They, they couldn't, you know, they couldn't, couldn't, you know, um, you know, by their conscience, you know, work there anymore. So I guess what I'm, what I'm getting at is it's, it's less of a choice now for, for those of us with these ideas. And so it's, it's basically just like solutions. That's where we're at. We need, um, we need to be able to exist. Um, we need our own, you know, society that is foundation upon, you know, peace and voluntarism and truth rather than coercion and deception. And, you know, this really atrocious, you know, uh, really atrocious coercion. Um, and the um, of the uh, of the survival society. So, um, yeah, I mean, it 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 started kind of with me. Like, I guess like a lot of people, like a lot of people who you know are new to you know freedom, they realize how enslaved they are and they have no way to get out. And thankfully, you know, I I've done I've dug a lot of this stuff up over the years and trying to make it as easy for people to find as possible. And uh, I I've, I think it's helping. Um, I think it's helping. Um, for people to actually see paths out of the out of the first realm. And with Pasnia, with the Republic of Pasnia and the second realm network. Um. 
we're we're trying to you know provide those opportunities. Um, we're working on a, a second round directory and map right now, and um, when we have that that map available and people can see all of the, you know um, all of the homes, the off grid homesteads, all of the um, anyway, once they can see everything on there, like Van Nomads, we've got a lot a lot of Van Nomads in the network already. They can start charting, you know. Um, we can start having our own trade network and they can, you know, probably feasibly, you know, come up with, um, come up with our own logistics network and people could, you know, start working. You'll start driving for the second realm, I guess is a way to put it. So we're trying to create those opportunities. People can actually get out. Um, cause it's not easy. I mean, it's, um, to build up a, a side hustle as, as I know you've, 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 you've done it with me you know, over the, over the past years. It's not, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, it's not an easy thing to be found. And, and I guess in, in the case of Vanu, it's good that it's, it's, it's hard to be found, but, um, I guess, um, well, yeah. it's what's really make it is to do it in a moral way, you know, like you and I have both studied some marketing and advertising because, you know, running into that frustration of how do you reach people and you can do it in a um, manipulative way, but that's not really what we're after because we don't want to control people and manipulate them. We want to encourage them and sell them, you know, so trying to do it in a morally way, a morally uh, just way is difficult in a society that is used to doing things immorally sorry to interrupt yeah. you there go ahead oh no you're you're good that's that's definitely true that's definitely true um yeah yeah um and and really like, again a lot of this wasn't planned and it's not going to look the same for for everybody and it's probably not going to look anything like my vision for a lot of people or like my path for, for a lot of people but um <clears throat> but uh yeah reg- but i guess what, what's been interesting about um yeah interesting about getting to this point is that, and it, again, it's kind of unplanned, but, um, I had the podcast that turned into the, you know, Liberty LUA, LUA radio turned into the publishing and then Vanu kept going as the podcast. And then there's Pasnia and all of these way are ways for people to, or I guess at least Pasnia and, and, and that are ways for people to support my efforts too. Um, and what you know, we're trying to build all together, you know, this, this parallel network, but, um, so yeah, it, it kind of all feeds into each other and it's, I don't really have to, um, advertise or market. And if I do, um, it's, it's always comical. So I just released, or it's all, always culture jamming based. So I just, I just released, um, it's called, uh, it was a PASNI uh, department of health and wellness announcement. Um, and, uh, it was, you know, regarding a hair mineral analysis test, which people can go listen to the, the, the advertisement, but, um, styled and, you know, it's, it's, people have to go listen to it, but it's, it's very much styled like a normal, um, you know, advert, you know, marketing commercial, but it's, you know, it's comedy. Um, so it's a way it's, it's, it's getting a, getting across, you know, mar- marketing. People enjoy listening to the advertisements. I got compliments on my advertisements. Um, like they enjoy listening to them. So like, that's, I think that's there. You don't have to, um, you know, there, there are good ways to, to approach things. And, 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 uh, as you said, you know, moral ways. And, um, uh, and I guess some people could say that comedy is manipulative, but um, I guess it's it's just a different a different approach. I wouldn't call it manipulative myself. I would just yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't. But yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, no, me either. And and it's like when we look at the strong arming tactics that are used by most most corporations or the government or schools, it's like it's usually uh, pretty evil. You know, forcing people to make choices right. that they don't want to make or tricking them into it by um, engaging their fear. You know, and that's pretty that's what i'm thinking more manipulative is yeah, like, yeah you know most advertising really centers around scaring somebody into getting something because they feel like they don't have another choice whereas right. what we're what you're doing or what we're doing is offering yep. a multitude of choices and possibilities and it seems like this networking has become for me very important um, because like how are we going to trade and barter uh, in a principled way, unless there's people to trade and barter with, you know, mm-hmm. and, but I, I think that is one of the most practical things that I've found in life to get around the matrix of the financial BS is like, I can make a deal with somebody I know. And like, I have a little community of people that I've built up over time and I can trade someone, Hey, I'll do this for you. And then you give me eggs or you teach me <coughs> yoga or you, and I, and I fix your door or whatever. And sometimes we do trade um, actual funds, but it's a lot better between people than it's not getting filtered through government agencies and such. Mm -hmm. And so that's one really practical thing we can do to work towards freedom for all is to support one another. So that's why I'm really excited about, you know, your ongoing work with um, both Vanu and Liberty Under Attack publications. And so I'd like to spend a little time kind of looking through some of the inventory of things that you have offered. And I just, before we start that, I just wanted to encourage people that like what you just said, how important this is, 
people always think just because someone's selling something that, oh, they're just doing it for the money, you know, but it's like, <laughs> this is totally different when someone like Shane is selling something to start the second realm, to jumpstart the world that we all want to live in. This is encouraging the lifestyle we want to live. We buy things from one another that give us value and, and it helps both of us, all of us. It's a win-win, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know, maybe you can expand on that a little bit and I'll, yeah. I'll start mm -hmm. getting the share screen going. Certainly. And I guess I'll, I'll also, um, you know, mention again that a lot of these, a lot, of, I guess the books we have in audiobook format that we can release, um, we, we, those are available on the Bonnie, pa Bonnie podcast, podcast feed for free. Um, and then most of, most of all of the old, you know, libertarian and Bonnie zines, those are all available for free too, um, online. Um, now I guess there are maybe a handful, which we, we also have, we also work with clients, clients and publishing. So we do have some clients who we, we can't, that's not something, a decision that we can make. Um, so um, few of them aren't available, but every, but the vast majority of them are, are available for free and, you know, PDF format. So um, yeah, it's all about getting the information out there. And the way that, I, that I'm putting, the, well, I guess the way that I, um, yeah, I guess the, yeah, again, the way that I look at it is if people want to help support my efforts, then they can, you know, they, they can buy books. I, I've, yeah, I found that, you know, just asking for donations doesn't really work. Um, and you got to offer people something and so I figure, um, you know, these, these high quality books, um, and yeah, some people don't like to read on screens either. So, cause people, you know, again, all about getting people choices and options. So, so, um, I got, uh, vanupodcast.com open. Mm -hmm. Can you see that Shane on your end? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yeah. I like your, uh, line here, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. And here, right at the top, um, if you look right now, is that um, what you were just describing, your health and wellness. I'll have to check that out after the show. That sounds great. <laughs> um, and then you said, here's free Vanu books right here at the top. Mm -hmm. So you can find the book that inspired this podcast. There it is right there, um, Rayo's book, The Search for Personal Freedom. Uh, there's a free download PDF, the free audio book right there, easy to find. Um, and you can download it. And then is all this other free Vanu publications? Mm -hmm. You got a whole bunch of stuff here. I'll let you talk, Shane. Yeah, yeah. And um, so that's, I mean, that's not, I think that's most of them. Um, so I, I switched hosts a few years back. And um, I think I have all the, all the links updated to those. But yeah, that was the initial back when I, I had a, a year or two of, um, I had had a lot of time just to type and digitize um, when I was in uh, college. So um, those are like the initial first, um, initial first like si uh, six or seven that I got from Jim. And I uh, found Vanu Life March 1973. Um, found it on a random website, and um, like an actual physical publication from 1983. It was a brilliant, really amazing one. Um, but uh, yeah, those are all you know. Those are all available for free right there, and uh, yeah, even more. So, which is a good a good start. That's fantastic. What happens when you click on one of these? Boom. Uh, well, maybe that link doesn't. There it work. is. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, Maybe it work. Yeah. Okay, so then let's go look at um, LUA Publications because mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you some questions about some of the books. Here you have um, the book that you put together, which is a strategy for self-liberation based on Vanu, and then you got the foreword by Ben Stone from mm -hmm. The Bad Quaker, right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, actually just released... Um, just released a second edition of that on September 11th. Um, so oh, uh, wow. it's uh, so that's actually the second edition. I didn't really indicate that on the front, but it's or indicate that on the cover, but it's I the see. only one available now. Um, but with the new uh, forward by Ben Stone, uh, and then uh, I wrote a, an introduction. Uh, you know, kind of well, kind of s highlighting some of the stuff that I covered as part of my path here. Um, you know, from philosophy to, to figuring out action, and um, then uh, adding. I added what three or four chapters. Um, updating on on some some stuff that I didn't touch on or that needed to be updated, so it's uh, yeah the second edition is available of Vanu's Strategy for Self Liberation. Um, That's pretty awesome, so, yeah. and you got it. Looks like you got it on Amazon too. Mm -hmm. But I mean, obviously, we'd rather have people go through your website, libertyunderattack.com. Yep. Um, it's always better to buy from someone's website than stupid Amazon, um, whenever possible. And then, okay, let's look through some of these. You got all these books. Okay, this is libertyunderattack.com, the main page, and look at all these choices. Um, 
talk a little bit about your project with these um, um, privacy laptops. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, obviously it's Liberty and Type Publications. Our specialty is, well, I guess not even really our specialty. It's where we started, though, was, is books, um, uh, books and book bundles. But uh, over the past couple few years, um, one of my colleagues uh, associates, Jamin Baconic, um, who uh, has been working on, he's been doing these ghost pads for like 20 years. Um, it's finally getting, it's, things are finally getting to a point, um, like the open source technology is free and open source space, where the stuff is really user friendly. Um, whereas it really wasn't, I've been into this stuff since 2015 and trying to work on work on some of it, and it really wasn't feasible for me, and therefore not for not, I'd say not for a lot of people. But now it's it's coming around. Um, it's definitely coming around. So we have uh, ghost phones, which are degoogled. Um, I guess they're Google Pixel threes, three A's. Google Pixel three A's. Um, so they're degoogled and they have Calyx OS on them. Um, I guess there there are a number of different open source operating systems for phones now. Um, the other popular one is Graphene. Um, which is all, which is also great. Um, but what Jamin goes for, and he, but he, and he can obviously flash uh, you know, graphene on a phone, if, phone for it if you want to. But the ones that we're offering are supposed to be like, if you switch over from an Android, like it's going to be the exact experience, except it's going to be a lot better because it's a free and open source software. So it's supposed to be easy to use. Um, where it, where a two op VPN is on, always on by default. Um, you can run everything through Tor if you wanted to. Um, yeah, the ghost phones are slick. I've been using I've been using one since March, and I'll never go back. Well, I have, I have two of them, but I'll, I'll never go back to uh, to to a spy phone or uh, or anything like that. Um, it's it's definitely a, a step up. And as far as the the laptops, um, they aren't necessarily uh, new uh, in the sense. So with, with laptops, it's really re with most technology nowadays with the the hardware in them, the chipset are in them. Um, they are not privacy friendly, and they're oftentimes closed source. So you don't know what the hell they're doing. And then there's the problem of the Intel, I guess the Intel management engine, which is in basically every single laptop that you come across today. And if you take that management engine out, it, it's, it's, it's the thing that spies on you that can you know, turn on your camera without you knowing and can basically take root access of your entire computer. No control because of this thing. Most laptops, you can't even use them. They brick. I guess Jamin calls them, they brick out. You can't use them if you remove that, that chip. So there's a, I guess there's a select number of laptops that he can work with. And he's got some new varieties coming out. Um, but uh, there's a lot. So a number of them are like the old um, Lenovo ThinkPads. Which have the um, they have the management engine removed and replaced with the privacy you know respecting open source one, and then he can toss on whatever you know Linux distro you uh, you prefer. Um, I know he's got uh, I I just got uh, his his most recent one of his most recent editions I think uh, Ghost Tablets. So it's uh, <laughs> it's a it's a it's a, sw it's a sweet looking machine. I don't think it's up on the site yet, but uh, it's a really really slick little machine, a miniature miniature version of a, a ThinkPad essentially. And then uh, I just got back so in on, yeah, on any of these. There, I'm. Uh, you're not going to be working on like a Microsoft or an OS operating no. system. It's got to be Linux, Linux, right? Yeah. So that would, I would argue that that would defeat the purpose. Um, partially yeah. defeat the purpose right. if you were to install one of those on there. Um, but uh, um, and but and, and that's that's definitely a valid, yeah, definitely a valid question. Something that I feared. I only switched over, um, just just like in June this year, actually. To be honest, um, I just got um the the most expensive laptop we have on there. Um, is the I think it's the I think it's this one, but it's a it's a Dell. Uh, it's it's not one of the Lenovo, Lenovo ThinkPads, but it's a it's a massive. It's more like a desktop to me. Um, but uh, it's a content creation ghost pad, so it's got G Ubuntu on it, which has the Ubuntu Studio. So it comes with like is that everything. Five twenty. I think it. Uh, that's the one all the way to the left. That's uh, nine thirty nine. Yeah. So maybe this one. I'm not sure if it's that one. I don't see yeah, it. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. yeah no worries. Uh, so yeah, Jamin, and Jamin has other. And so I might have. So I don't have everything listed on my site that Jamin has. That Jamin does offer too. So I'll, I'll, that's and pretty much any anything you want. He can do. He's he's an expert on this on this on this stuff. But um. But yeah, I guess just right on. just to close that that so one thought for wanted, for, they, for a content they could creator. Contact you right. Yeah. Yep. Um. And I think Jamin's email. And I'll just put it out there. Um. Jamin at semisynthetic dot net. Um. Is his email address. And um, if uh, yeah, I can I can put you in contact with them other ways too. Um, if yeah, people that are listening to your podcast. So, um, yeah. Sorry, I keep interrupting. You were trying oh, no, to you're good. About... No, you're good. Um, so um, the uh, so I just switched over in June to the content creation um, ghost pad, and um, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. I was working on like a 2013 old Windows machine, which you know, God bless it for still working. Um, being a backup, mm -hmm. but uh, you know I, I can't use it for like five minutes when I turn it on. After that, it's it's manageable um, now that I've got it down. But this thing is like this Dell is probably like ten years old. Um, I don't know for sure, you know what the what the year is, but um, it's basically silent and it's super fast and um, 
yeah, it's it's uh, it's yeah, with Ubuntu, fantastic. Highly recommend. Even if and you don't have to even and I and I I don't recommend. I, so obviously, if you want to buy from us, we'll make uh, Jamie can do it for you and make it easy. But you can also um, all this stuff is free and open source, so you can get your own. Um, you can buy your own Lenovo ThinkPad from eBay, I think, and you can you know flash whatever thing you want on there. Do, do it all yourself, or you can have Jamie do it, which I outsource my tech stuff to Jamie now, um, and I'm more than happy to <laughs> to uh, admit that. That's fantastic, Shane. You know, and it's like that's real. You know, like none of us have all this figured out, but what you're offering is options, and you're sharing with people. Hey, here's a way to do it. Here's another way to do it. You want to save some money? Do it this way. I mean, that's just honest. And um, it's caring about freedom and not just caring about making money. You know, like, obviously, you got to find a way to pay the bills. So um, I recommend people, if you're going to, you know, get one of the things or buy one of these things, to, why not try to go through uh, someone that cares about freedom? You know, but if not, Shane's here to give some advice and help. And you can listen to his shows and, um, there's, there's lots of information out there and people that are willing to help if you're someone who wants to work towards or fight for freedom. So mm -hmm. let's look let's look at the books and the packages a little bit, sure. what we have available. Oh, here's the ghost phone you were talking about. Mm -hmm. And then um, the Vanu Beginner's Guide. Yeah. That, yeah. That's mm -hmm. something you, you put together again, right? Was that the first edition or is that different? No, so that's just um, I wrote. It was an article, I think. Um, I'm I'm an, the editor of uh, the editor at Agoras Nexus, and uh, um, so I contribute I contribute articles over there occasionally. And I put together a, a Vani Beginner's Guide in article format, at least as a podcast. And um, then it's it's really good for you know um, if people like uh, I take them I take them to Freedom Festivals and give them out for free. Um, so that's what you know bulk pamphlets. If people go to Freedom Festivals, they can you know have those. Um, to take with them um, if they want to, you know, help spread word about the second realm. Wonderful. And then you got like a package, the self liberation mm -hmm. bundle, and that just includes all kinds of stuff. Oh, I was trying to make it zoom in and it went the other way. It's weird how that <laughs> happens sometimes. But um, mm -hmm. so you package up, and that's like digital digital books in the package correct oh no so those are uh um if the digital ones are marked digital um so the digital self liberation bundle is down there one to the right um but these so that, that self liberation bundle is uh 18 um i have to update it still we published a few more books um but this is the current um until i do this is the current um self liberation bundle 18 books um the first 18 books that we published um, you know, all the stuff on Banu. Um, and then one thing we haven't talked about, which is another huge um, focus of Elliot Publications is, so, so books have been really inspirational to me are like Hashtag Agora, which is um, Agorist fiction. So these are, these are you know, fictional books based on, well, I guess Hashtag Agora is based off real people, you know, second, real Second Realm folks um, out over in Germany, I guess in, in Europe more, more generally. But um, so uh, it's, so we offer Hashtag Agora, which was really inspirational for me um, to start, you know, give me ideas of how, um, how this free society could be built, how free how free people can interact with, um, you know, the servile society, um, all of those things. So we we have hashtag Agora as part of that part of that bundle. Um, Brushfire is in there, the first one, which we we just released the I guess it was a, a number of months ago, um, released the second um, the second in that series, um, Brushfire in 2048. Um, two different books, but uh, but yeah, Brush Fire is in that initial self liberation bundle um, by one of our uh, publishers or one of our publishing clients, uh, Matthew Atecki. It's a really really fantastic um, book. Very we're getting re very very good reviews, and um, you've got on the screen right there the Brush Fire bundle, which has both um, Brush Fire and Twenty Forty Eight, um, the, the the newest one. Uh, and there is a I guess there there are more coming. I guess it's supposed to be a trilogy, so um, more to look forward to. I'm having trouble finding um, Agora, hashtag Agora. It, is it not listed by um, itself? It's down at the very bottom, I think. Um, yeah, it was like, the, it was the first book I ever published. So it, yeah, it's probably down there at the very bottom right. Oh, oh, there it guess. is. The yep. Journey of Daniel LaRousseau. Crypto Anarchism. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah, so there's that. And then you even have some. Oh uh, gosh, yeah. Other there's products there's more. Too, there's right? there's more. Yeah. So um so or or apothecary is also on there. Um so my my free wife Aura she makes uh, some really incredible salves and uh, natural insect repellents. Um, comfrey salve which we grow the comfrey here at uh, here uh, here at Veritas Pasnia. Um so those are all available too if you want to uh, you know um, 
you know, assist your, your you or your family in your pursuit of health liberation, self liberation, then we've got help with that too. Yeah, natural insect repellent, thief salve, comfrey. And comfrey is a powerful um, mm -hmm. herb that really helps healing. Um, even like inside, I had a friend who really hurt his knee and it was like inside of his knee. It wasn't like the skin, it was like inside and he kept putting comfrey and it made a big difference in the healing Certainly. process. And so, um, okay, uh, Tom Marshall, I, I haven't really looked at that one, the life of Tom Marshall. So, uh, so yeah, Tom Marshall is the, well, it, it may be his given name. It may not be, you don't know, but that's the, that's the name before, when, before he switched to Rayo, he was Tom Marshall. It's the name that he went by. Um, so the life of Tom Marshall is, oh, I, I guess the, um, this is, uh, Requill. This is the best, um, I guess, if you want to get like a quick rundown of, um, you know, Rayo's life from his, uh, you know, early 60s to, um, you know, throughout the um, his publishing and zines and his what can be tracked from his lifestyle activities. Um, it's the best compilation to give you a, kind of, a, I guess, a linear chronology of, of his life. And uh, hopefully I, I plan on it's it's going to be a, it's one of my bigger projects, but I'm, I'm calling it Writings from a Self-Liberator. And I'm going to since I have everything that he wrote now. Um, when I get, get back around to digitizing, I'll basically put every, everything he ever wrote uh, from like 1963 to 1974 in chronological order. And then I'm going to write like a really long, like, you know, once that's all there, it's going to be, it's probably going to be illuminating for me too, for many ways. But um, I'm not sure what it's, I, I don't know how it's, I, I've, I imagine there's going to be a lot of thoughts. Um, so I don't know, an introduction or a conclusion or something like that. Um, but that's going to be a big one and, and, uh, it might be, you know, five, 10 years even before that, that comes out. Cause you know, building in the physical, physical, physical second realm is more important right now. Um, and, um, yeah, not that Bonnie. Yeah. We'll have to talk out. about, about Pasnia a little bit before we finish up. Um, how about brush fire? Uh, yeah. So brush fire is, uh, that's, um, really, really amazing, uh, you know, freedom, freedom oriented, um, thriller, um, yeah, which we we just released. So that's the full audiobook, um, which I think is like fifteen plus hours, and yeah, fifteen hours and seventeen minutes. And then um, yeah, we just released like an hour teaser of that on the Vonnie Podcast podcast feed. So um, if you want to check out the first hour, um, then uh, you can do so. But uh, yeah, it's uh, oh, works cool. works in it works in uh, some some Vanu security culture. Uh, you know, using uh, using ghost pads and ghost tablets, think you know, ghost ghost pads, all that stuff. Um, again, it's kind of like Hashtag Agora, where if you want to see, po I guess, a possibility of how um, these tools can all interact with a free lifestyle, then you can, you know, actually get some um, get some inspiration. And gosh, yeah, there's a lot of inspiration, some insight, yep. and some um, imagination. In what if, I've talked about that before, that's one of the things that people are lacking: the ability to imagine a better world. Everybody gets so cased in by this fish tank that we're in now that it's hard for them to see the ocean or see, you know, what do they call see the uh, forest through the trees because mm -hmm. we're so indoctrinated and used to this, this world of slavery that trying to imagine freedom seems really, Oh, cool. Here's the evolution trilogy. I did a, a interview with Todd. Um, mm -hmm. geez, it's been a couple years and I have his, that book. Um, that's fun. His fictional story. Yeah. Gosh, there's just so much here. Um, oh, your Pasnia, full um size flag that's <laughs> yep. pretty awesome um anything else jumping out here that you wanted to talk about um the firearms that's important i suppose i, I just mentioned the the most recent um the most recent thing i added to the site was our digital section um so if people just want to um you know instead of buying you know the kindle version on amazon which i don't think we even have um you know all of them on on amazon but um, yeah, if you want to get you know um, just downloads to the books, then those are available too. Um, and it, it asks, I can't turn it off. So like, it, there's obviously there's no shipping information necessary for digital books. So don't enter anything. Um, yeah, no reason to. But uh, yeah. Excellent. So I mean, there's a wealth of information here that can be accessed. I mean, you can start off for free, and then you know get buy something support support shane's work and um support your own work and project of being inspired to take steps towards freedom this is a great way to do it um how about um like for instance todd i talked to todd and he was just a regular guy like me and he got his book published under your um under your website that's pretty awesome 
so, so it looks like you yeah, have so we, a so we, we didn't, we didn't necess- do that? So we, um, he was one. Um, there are some people who reached out, came across us, and reached out, um, and, you know, independent authors. And um, so we've got his book listed on the Elliot Publications site. Um, we didn't necessarily publish it, but it, it is. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because um, I, I need to have him on. Um, I need to have him on uh, Vonu to talk about it. I've read the first two and uh, need to finish the third, and uh, I, I need to have him on anyway. But because yeah, they're they're definitely great stories. And uh, um, but yeah, for for authors, um, we aren't necessarily taking on. Um, we are. I mean, we're not like uh, looking for new clients per se. Um, but people are. You know, if authors are lo- authors. Uh, you know, are looking for assist- assistance publishing. Um, they go to liber- libertarian.com pu- uh, forward slash publish. And from uh, you know reading interview proofreading. Um, to you know, Kindle and paperback formatting, um, basically you know all from you know from the full publication process, we can help with it all, um, and uh, yeah. So like I said, we're not necessarily looking for clients, but if if I, I always encourage people to reach out, because um, if I you know if I resonate if I you know resonate and I feel you know really really good about it, um, I I'll you know I'll, t- I'll take stuff on, but um, but I, I kind of want I need to with LA publications. There there are a couple I guess internal projects. Um, re- I guess uh, second editions to books um, they need to come out, and uh, so I guess that's kind of what 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 the focus is at least for the coming months. And then the other the other factor too is that spring on a homestead is kind of a um, kind of chaotic and tr- try yeah try to try to uh, limit um, other projects when when that's coming around. So yeah, you know pe- people go looking on websites and they start thinking um, they're so used to the commercial world out there that. Oh, everything's figured out and everything's done. But you got to realize you look at a website like Shane's here. He's done all this by himself, figured out all the technology. Um, and that is no easy task. I'll tell you what, trying to maintain a website is never ending work. You're constantly having to update things and deal with new problems and computer glitches and, um, you know, paying fees to keep all these things going. Mm-hmm. It There's a lot to it. And so what, what you've started doing is um, one thing I love about Shane, your work is that you're always like a very practical person. You're actually working on these things in the real world. You're not just talking about them like a lot of people do. So what you're describing is that right now you got a lot going on because of what you got going on on the homestead. So let's um, segue a little bit. I'm going to stop this screen share into um, talking a little bit about you know, practical solutions and things we're actually doing in our real life. I talked about in my world, one thing I do is I work for people. I, I know how to do handyman work, construction work, and I will trade my labor sometimes for um, my self-defense class or for my yoga class or um, for cash mm-hmm. because I can handle that in the way I please. So that's one thing that I'm able to do in the real world. And I've been able to do it more and more the more I've been able to find um, ways to supplement my income and doing a little bit of online freelancing work allows me to not have a full-time job for the time being. And then I don't have to pay, um, do things the way the government wants me to do them. I can kind of skirt around some of their BS. So, Mm -hmm. you know, um, talk about some of the things you're doing in the real world out there and Pasnia. I I love, I love hearing about it. Oh, sure. Sure. So um, I guess I could provide, I guess the couple minute overview um, of the Free Republic of Pasnia. Um, so back in 2020, I, you know, the, you know, chaos ensued in the, in the Serval Society, um, as we're all well aware of by this point, pretty much anywhere in the world. So yeah, it's, it's I don't have to explain that. Um, so yeah, I guess the first thing I did was I, I got, uh, goats and lambs. Uh, I got a, a couple, I guess I got a couple goats and a few lambs and, uh, um, started, started down that avenue. And, uh, then one of my buddies, Jason Henta came out, uh, to visit mid 2020, and um, you know, for some, I was, I was feeling like I, I, I never thought that I would get people to come out to um, Southern Illinois is, is where I'm at, um, like an hour, I guess, uh, 90, 90 miles um, east of St. Louis, but uh, I never thought I'd get people to you know come out here in, in the first place. So I, I, it was kind of a shot in the dark. But I was like, you know, I'm going to start an event here called Vonnie Fest and see if I can get anyone to come out here. Well, a couple months into that, it turned into not just Vonnie Fest, but I was starting, I was declaring my independence and starting my own country. Um, the Free Republic of Pasnia. So, so Pasnia is P-A-Z-N-I-A, um, and the P-A-Z is an acronym for Permanent Autonomous Zones, uh, basically pockets of freedom where we can, you know, actually be free, which we've been talking about, you know, um, this entire conversation so far. Um, and uh, it's also p- it's also peace in Spanish. So um, the Free, free Republic of Pasnia, you know, the, I call it, you know, the life essence of Pasnia is peace. Um, but uh, um, beyond that, I mean, we it's it's really um, it's more we offer what we call stakeholders, S T E A K holders, 
and um, so people can, um, you know, I guess join the cooperative if you want to if you want to think about it that way. Um, and you know, um, benefits. You know, we have Pasnia passports. Um, you know, special Pasnia IDs. Um, there's a lot of a lot of cool features people can check out. It's a lot of a lot of cool cool little perks. Um, and then obviously access to uh, the Psychronom network, the parallel network that we're building. So, um, and I guess what that what that entails for me here um, on on the homestead is uh, basically. Um, I've got 22 acres, and we've got chickens, ducks, and turkeys. Um, and then, uh, you know, see the the herd's expanded. The herd expanded a lot, and we had to, you know, um, take care of that um, a couple months ago. Um, you know, fill up the freezer is always a always a good thing, always a really really positive thing. And um, so that was uh, um, that's kind of what we're working on now. We just uh, we just went through our first uh, batch of bunnies, our first batch of rabbits, um, which is crazy. How as I I couldn't really tell the difference between like turkey and rabbit. Um, to be frank, I have really, it's, it's, it's crazy how similar they are. I never thought that. Um, but, uh, anyway, we're, we're, we're just building out our, 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 uh, self-sufficiency here, uh, you know, from food, we got gardens here as well. Um, or does terrific work with the gardens here. And, um, then, um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess just in every area, um, making, making slow progress, um, and investigating, uh, for, for our, you know, for our homestead here. And then also another, you know, another perk to, you know, joining the second home network is, um, we're investigating a lot, a lot of, uh, um, in addition to food, things like health, uh, we've got a passing department of health and wellness. We've got an aqua cure here. Uh, we've got a rife machine, which is behind me. <clears throat> we're, we're all constantly coming up, you know, um, trying to acquire a lot of these tools that, uh, whether they're expensive, like the aqua cure is a couple thousand dollars and a rife machine. I mean, you, it's, I guess they're out there, but they're not super easy to find. But at least the you know the old style legitimate rifle machines. Um, so um, so there's that. There's uh, the passing department transportation, which um, we were talking about the logistics network. Once we get the map and directory going, um, and then there's the the Department of Energy, which uh, we just had um, a couple days ago. We had one of our, our one of a fellow Pasnian um, come out, and uh, he donated a, a magnetic motor, um, which can apparently power a fridge. He just didn't have time to deal with it. And uh, so we, we just got that in, um, and there, there's a lot. Um, there, there's there's really a lot, um, and I guess one one thing that we, we're really focusing, or I guess a couple things we're really focusing on this year, and I can go more into one than I can the other is uh, so the the aqua cure we have here. It's a Browns gas generator. Um, well, um, <clears throat> George also offered or he offered for a while, and now you can just put them on yourself. But they're called fuel saver kits, and they're basically the the Browns gas hydrogen. Um, add on it, it it doubles it, it uh, greatly increases your fuel efficiency up to you know double in some cases and it's but it's I, I have the tutorial video we had this like 14 year old you know nephew or granddaughter put it together so she did the entire thing except for the soldering step so it was like here here she's doing it so you guys she can do to. it you can yes. do it so yeah. that's so it can yeah. be used on like the car on you know cars the rhino the side by side here um, it can be used on propane part of our um part of our you know independence right now or i guess more close to independence is that we use uh, propane for a lot of stuff so instead of being you know 100 percent dependent it's all we uh, they only need to come out you know once a year and if we can you know get the you know the fuel saving saver kit on that you know double the efficiency of propane tank add a second we might be able to you know not have them come out for you know a few years and that just be an interim solution to a lot of the other things that we're looking into um but uh yeah there's there's <coughs> there's uh there's there's quite a bit um, quite a bit for sure yeah and that you know some people, I because I'm doing these interviews all the time, I'm talking to other people who are talking about philosophy and principles, and some people I feel like um, in discussion will take it to the extreme of what we should and shouldn't do, and, you know, even like the extreme vegans, you know, like you shouldn't even be eating meat. I'm a vegetarian for the most part, but um, on the other hand, the realistic world we're living in, like I was said, the fish tank we're in, we have to find every possible thing we can do to move forward. And, and what you're doing is creating self-sufficiency. And this is a concept that I think some people really struggle with that if we do really want to be free from government, that means we have to be able to take responsibility for, like you're saying, our energy, our medicine, our food, our, um, our well-being. We can't um, expect anybody else to give us these things. And so to survive, we got to eat what we have available. We got to learn how to, grow our food or we got to learn how to um have animals on our property that can help maintain the property or and if we're going to eat the animals then we have to take care of the animals and they're going to get treated a hell of a lot better than animals on a factory farm that's for dang sure you know and yeah. um i love all the practical steps you're taking um i'm curious a little bit about how difficult it's been making some of those transitions i know when we first started talking you were still like 
in college, probably living under your parents' roof at that time, right? And you've had to make some big changes between now and then. <clears throat> um, so I was living, I was living, I had a house with my brother and we used to, he usually had a friend or two that would cycle in his roommates. But, um, so I, I but, so I guess it, it's, it's definitely been, um, it's definitely been an adjustment, I guess. Um, and trying to balance, I, I called, I call it a liberated lifestyle. And I, I, cause I, I think one of the, one of, I guess one of the, one of the ways the survival society can exist the way that it does is to keep everyone so damn busy all the time that they can't even have an independent thought themselves. They keep everyone so busy, so stressed out, so worried, so in fear that there's no way that they can focus on, you know, on, on, on you know, they don't have the bandwidth to, um, you know, you, you work all day, you come home and, you know, you cook dinner and it's like, what do you want to, you want to sit on the, you don't, you want to sit on the couch. You don't want to like, um, at least in, in, so, so for some people's cases, I know it was for me a lot of times. I didn't want to do a lot after, you know, I was exhausted. Um, and, uh, so I, I guess uh, um, I call it a liberated lifestyle to where, you know, like uh, my time is my own. Um, but there's also like, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot that I need, a lot that you know needs to get done, a lot that I want to get done. And um, I guess it's just it's trying to balance that um, um, to where um, to where, you know, like uh, the second realm gets built, but also that we're not slaving away and just, you know, like, I guess becoming our own tyrants, you know. Um, so I guess that's been begin it be, been like one of the one of the hardest adjustments is I mean I f for a while I mean up until you know four years ago I did, I mean I was um, I, I I you know put it this way I was chronically poisoning myself um, and I was chron then I was chronically poisoned as a child you know with Babylon pharmaceuticals um, so like I, I I didn't have like uh, uh, I guess the I, I the best word I can come up with is bandwidth um, I didn't have the bandwidth to entertain a lot of these ideas to you know actually see how First off, to actually like recognize a fishbowl, how big is a fish fishbowl, and you know, like actually starting to you know starting to like come to these real, come to these realizations. But um, yeah, like the extent of the problem, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I guess just um, yeah, it's 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 been wrestling with a lot of uh, you know a lot of you know, new new and difficult ideas like breakthrough energy. I would have thought that was you know nonsense, um, you know, years ago. Looking into things like uh, I've I've interviewed a guy named Phoenix Aurelius, who's a medical spagyrist. Um, so he uses um, he's and he does it with great success. He uses sidereal, true sidereal yeah, astrology true to alchemist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's it's wild. Yeah. He and not he and he's a, he's a he's a blacksmith too. He had like swords that he you know smelted and it's like he does everything. I mean that's it's he's a he's a I guess a, a renaissance man, but. Um, Right. Yeah, so like a, a lot of the stuff I would have never entertained before, but uh, we have uh, on the on the Paznia um, Agora page um, where we have you know I guess uh, Paznia you know preferred you know businesses and hustles to you know to, to support. Um, a medical astrologer reached out to me and gave me a free um, you know a free you know he typed up a very lengthy and in depth you know reading and it's like holy shit like spot on. And he had, like he was just a random guy who sent me an email. He didn't know me from Adam really, right? So. Um, wow. and then obviously Phoenix, I've, I've interviewed Phoenix. I've listened to a lot of, you know, Phoenix's stuff and, um, he's, he, he, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to doubt now. Um, it's, it's really, really hard to doubt. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like he really walks the walk and, um, it's very intense to listen to him talk because he talks in, he might be talking about a physical thing, but he's also talking about a spiritual truth and, um, someone who really has, took the alchemy thing and um, hermetics to another level. And, and I think that's like what you're doing in a lot of ways too. It's a type of alchemy. It's one thing to talk about philosophy and it's another thing to have the wisdom to take the actions. And part of that is like you're describing too, our own personal health and learning to um, overcome our own obstacles. I know you've, you've overcome some physical obstacles I have, like for me, learning to do the Wim Hof breathing got me past this huge allergy problem, which is like you're saying, when you're working day to day, when I was working in construction and out working eight hours, driving an hour of that time, um, coming home, kind of beat up, not being able to breathe right, you know, what am I going to do in the evening with my time except just recuperate and prepare for the next day, right. you know, but little by little we start chipping it away and i know some people out there you got kids you got all these responsibilities you're like it's overwhelming i can't do it at all tell you what you can chip away at it and and through the books that that um shane's showing us and the podcasts that he's making and that i'm making that other similar people are making you can chip away at these problems like you know I'm, i was joking like we met 20 years ago or whatever i guess it's actually six or seven but <laughs> it's taken you um six or seven or eight years working on this website and through that time you've made a lot of connections and now you have people like someone dropped by and brought you this magnetic motor 
someone else gives you the connection for the best way to do these laptops, but that's you putting action into the world and putting your podcasts out there and doing the work of reading these books and sharing them with people. And then you've given so much that now people bring back to you and now you have these networks. So that's encouragement to people listening. You got to get going on this stuff. It takes time. You're not going to start Pasnia today and have it fully running tomorrow. You know, it takes a lot of hard work and um, a process, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate that. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's just I, I, what I've always said. And even when I didn't have any idea of a vision or like, I didn't see, I really didn't see any way out of the first realm of the survival society for me either. Like, like I didn't see one, like the, the image wasn't in my head, but I, what I always said and what I always stuck to is like, if you just do like one thing a day, it doesn't matter what it is, just like make sure to consistently, what, no matter how big or how small, you know, the step is, um, eventually you'll, you'll look back, you know, after five years and you'll be like, wow, all that stuff seemed like, you know, minuscule nonsense, but at the, actually, you know, when it all piles up, it's like uh, you, you see real success. Um, and I guess the other way that I put this is um, cutting ties to the, to the Serval Society. So um, it's like uh, if you've got, uh, you know, credit cards and mortgage and, um, you know, um, that's, uh, you know, one, you know, one main job for your, for your, um, you know, fin you know, for your finance, you know, for your, well, you know, well-being and all. Um and then, you know, um, very slowly, you know, um, you know, maybe one credit card at a time, uh, you know, one bank account at a time and, uh, you know, just slowly get down to um, and, and as you learn more, as you um, become more uh, competent, um, then, yeah, you can you might be able to make bigger steps. But really, the, the important thing is just to get started and be consistent about it. And um, yeah, and, and, and yeah, obviously, always keep in mind that Vonum is just for the making. But obviously, there's there's a lot of resources out there to get to get you started. Um, I am obviously always available on the Telegram Pasnia chat, um, uh, t.me forward slash Pasnia chat. Um, people want to, um, you know, join our committee of correspondence. Um, we got like 150 some people in there now. It's crazy. Um, like that alone is just, it's, it's crazy. That's, that's, that's getting close to 200, you know, real people. And it's not just like uh, most of those folks are like very vetted to where I've known them for like five plus years. And the other ones like are, are very networked to where like, um, where they're essentially vetted. So like, it's a very, it's a, um, it's a really, it's you know quite large you know, tight knit, knit community yeah community mm -hmm. yeah that's fantastic you know and that that takes time to build up and look at there's a way to meet some really awesome people just right there and um you know that kind of segue to the kind of last subject i wanted to run by you mm -hmm. um before we close up which is you know for me what opened a lot of these doors to the people i have in my community now because i have both you know multiple online community groups that i communicate with and then I have local people that um, are with me on varying scales, but all agreement of the importance of freedom. And that's taken some time to cultivate. But one of the things that really got me there was um, having that bravery to speak out online and to share my work and to invite people to communicate with me by having a podcast, by having a website. <clears throat> And by putting my email address out there and saying, hey, contact me if you're interested in natural law, if you care about freedom. And people did, you know. And so um, creating content and getting your content out there, I'd like you to talk a little bit about that process and, and encourage people to get started as a way to network and to start doing these things. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad you brought it up as I, I realized that, um, you know, another guy we used to be in masterminds with Philip Frey um, interviewed me on this, like, yeah, uh, it was like self, uh, like the a way, you know, using podcasting is like a way of self discovery. And, um, and yeah, you're, you're talking about the connections. Like, I, 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 I've, I've interviewed people I never thought I'd be able to interview. Um, and then there's folks like that, that, that would have, we have had never, re never had a reason to talk if, you know, I didn't, you know, wasn't able to invite them on to talk about their work. Um, and then, um, yeah, just as, 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 and I guess I'll, I'll say that a lot. So there's some stuff on, on the Vonnie podcast where, um, I, where it's, I purely like have them on because I have questions for them and I can just tie it into the podcast. I can all usually always tie anything into self liberation and it works really, really well. Um, and especially with Pazni now, cause it's, you know, basically every avenue of the human, the human existence and every human institution. So, um, all of it, pretty much everything is relevant. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a great way to like, if I have questions, specific questions for somebody, I can have them on to talk about their work and have a great conversation and, uh, you know, I can ask them a question or two. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy to think about, um, you know, all from starting that podcast back, you know, February, February of 2015, February 8th, 2015. Uh, was when I launched Liberty Attack Radio, and um, I would have never, <clears throat> would have never imagined, um, you know, all the connections I made. It was, you know, six months when I started the podcast or the radio show, 
um, I found uh, found out about the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest, and that's where a lot of these people I know come from. Um, you know, Michigan, Chicago area, and then people I just met at, at that festival. Um, a lot of it originated from there, which originated for podcasting, and uh, then yeah, this entire network. So, um, yeah, the the importance of uh, you know, yeah, networking and connections is is uh, especially now, um, and especially with people that um, that are that are of like mind and you know that are anti coercion, um, who aren't going to coerce you or turn you into coercers. Um, so, um, yeah, it's of the utmost importance, and you know, getting, just you know, getting out there. I mean. You, you you put it this way, you know, you put it out there and, you know, it comes back. I mean, it's, 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 it's kind of that way, this, you know, in this, this, this realm that we find ourselves in. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, you, 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 uh, you, you find the tribe that you resonate with, I guess is a way to put it. So, yeah. Right. But it does take, it takes that, um, initiative and willpower to reach out and to work through that nervousness of, you know, uh, they're all watching me. Everybody's going to notice. No one's going to like what I do. You know, one thing I try to share with people, one of the realities I realized, you know, I had this whole back before I met you when I started the script show, my first podcast, like this fear of sharing my stuff. And then I realized when you start sharing your stuff, you'd be lucky if you get anyone to watch it or listen to it. You know, the problem isn't all these people saying, oh, this sucks or this isn't good. The problem is, and you want to even look at don't be a on publishing your work um it's like it's not like the whole world's gonna see it as soon as you put it on the internet your problem is going to be the opposite getting people to check it out and that that comes with time and consistency and you know join groups you know get get on um the vanu podcast and join the telegram group or you know join us on end evil on thursdays podcasts and get part of the conversation email your favorite content creator and offer to help them in some way, give something to these communities and these communities will give back to you. You know, that's what I would recommend to folks to get started. It's not easy. I mean, there's the technological um, barriers, right? There's so much to learn technologically and that's scary, but you learn by doing right. You get in there and you're like, oh, I want to make a video. What does it take? You know, I can do it with my phone. And then after you do a couple with your phone, you're like, oh, maybe I should try doing it with, with the laptop, you know? <laughs> So, um, yeah, uh, I guess that's kind of where I'm at. I'm always trying to encourage people and motivate people to um, work, move forward in their plans. I think if everybody was doing what you're doing or trying to or even what I'm doing, the world would be an awesome freaking place. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we got a ways to go. You know, more people aren't doing it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, the uh, the options and the resources will be available. Uh, be available. The uh, people who need to find them will find them, and um, eventually they'll hop in the Pasadena Committee Committee of Correspondence chat and uh, join the Second Realm. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 been great chatting, and you know, I I uh, you know appreciate uh, um, yeah, appreciate that that you're still around doing it because uh, you know there's it's uh, there's some that are out there still you know pot, like old podcasters and stuff, but there's a lot that have also you know disappeared too, um, understandably. But uh, you know, I, I appreciate that you're you're still still here around doing it. So. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Shane. It made me so, you know, I remember like 2020 when I was recognizing right away, I was like, oh, here we go. This is this is like a 9-11, but like 3.0, they're coming out with this virus to scare everybody. And I started looking back at my old podcasts and favorite people. And I looked up you and you were still out there and we had a conversation. And I was like, yes, <laughs> you know, like real people that know what's up, you know, that understand freedom are out there and we care. And, um, you know, we'll never give up. So thank you, Shane, for um, fighting the good fight all these years, all these 30 years we've known each other. <laughs> Wait, I just turned 30. Or eight, year. whatever it is. Who cares? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so I've known you since you were zero, yeah, in my imagination. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it feels like a long time, man. It, it does, like, yeah. It, it really feels does. like it was so many years ago since we met. But yeah. Multiple but good times. times. And thanks for joining me today and um, setting aside this time. I really appreciate it. Check out libertyunderattack.com. Um, check out the Vanu podcast and um, vanupodcast.com. And um, that Telegram channel, I'll have to get that link and put it in the chat when I play the show. Um, I'll stream the show in a few Thursdays from now. Mm -hmm. And gotcha. so there'll be an opportunity in the chat if you want to show up Shane or um, for people to comment during the show and I can share some of your links there too. Sure. And, and, and I guess I uh, should, anything should else mention... you want to uh, 
Go ahead. Um, yeah, should mention that there's a 10% discount code over at libertarianattack.com um, and evil. So if your audience wants to go over there and uh, and check it out um, or go, go you know go uh, make a purchase, then um, you can save a little money too. So um, yeah, I guess just uh, that those are all those are all the plugs, and I, I appreciate appreciate uh, the invitation to come on. And um, yeah, I mean it's 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 all about building up this parallel network. And um, I guess maybe because I, I don't make a lot of fiat money, and I don't want to. Um, I try to encourage people to pay, you know, Bitcoin or Monero or something like that, or just, you know, trade, barter. Because, um, you know, like I could do a lot with, you know, like $500, but I can also do all with magnetic motor too, right? Like just as that as an example, um, like there's a lot of, you know, well, there's a lot of stuff that, you, you know, money is, you know, money is kind of like, it's there as an option, but like definitely not a preference. So, um, yeah, anyway. Um, so, yeah, I guess that that's, that's important. That's right. Important we didn't too. even get into talking about crypto and bitcoin but that's a whole nother good conversation and if anyone digs into your work they're going to learn a lot um a lot about those things so because i know you've you've spent quite a few episodes discussing all these options and ways to go about things anyone wants to know that the information's out there so thanks for doing all that great work shane much appreciated right on. great talk i guess we'll close it up and um we'll get back together soon before too long Thanks, Jay. Cheers from uh, Free Republic. <laughs>